It has a snake-like body and suction cup mouth stacked with rows of sharp teeth. Inside, there's a file-like tongue in the middle that flicks out and drills through the scales and skin of the fish, and then it feeds on the fish's blood and body fluids. The sea lamprey is like something out of a horror film, feasting on the fish of the Great Lakes. The fish is native to the Atlantic Ocean. They spawn in freshwater rivers and streams, but they eventually found their way into the Great Lakes, first documented in Lake Ontario in 1835. By 1938, they were established in all five Great lakes destroying native fish populations. The use of lamprecide along with other control measures had reduced population by nearly 95 percent, but... The lampreys are slimy, resilient beasts that will uh, take advantage of relaxation and control and balloon out of control again, um, given the chance. The COVID-19 pandemic saw the relaxation of some of those measures. Like Erie and uh, like Michigan, we saw a doubling in the lamprey numbers and we saw a, a significant jumps in Lakes Huron and Ontario, um, and we saw a large jump in Lake Superior. And it could have devastating ecological and economical impacts on the Great Lakes. They're just able to kill 40 pounds, I think, of fish in their 12 to 18 month feeding period. The fish in the Great Lakes are often unable to su survive the sea lamprey attacks. Gaydon says while this spike is concerning, work is underway through a binational sea lamprey control program to manage populations. We're cautiously optimistic that while these numbers are high and economically and ecologically damaging to the Great Lakes, that they're also going to be um, temporary blips in the numbers. With the hopes that in years to come, Lamprey will once again be reduced to pre-pandemic levels. Eric Avella, Global News, Toronto.